This is former law clerk for Justice Neil Gorsuch and the founder and um, president of the Article 3 Project, Mike Davis. Mike, welcome to the show. Okay, some interesting developments as we wait for this affidavit to be unsealed and see what's going to be redacted. I do want to say this, the National Archives today pulling um, a, a page out of Trump's playbook here, releasing this letter that they sent to Trump's lawyers back in May saying, hey, we've been asking for these documentations, these 700 pages for a year. We've given you tons of time here and you haven't complied. If I look at this letter, I have it. I've read through the whole thing. It doesn't look great for Trump. Well, it's this is a typical bureaucratic dispute between former presidents of the United States who think that their records are personal and the bureaucrats at the National Archives going back to when the Presidential Records Act was passed in the 1970s, where they think that every time a president sneezes into a Kleenex, it's a presidential record. So this is a natural tug of war. The president has the absolute constitutional power to classify and declassify anything he wants, as confirmed by the 1988 Supreme Court case. He has the absolute sole statutory power to determine whether a record is a personal record that belongs to him or a presidential record that goes to the bureaucrats of the archives to get categorized and again, almost certainly gets sent back to his library, as confirmed by a 2012 District of Columbia case by an Obama-appointed judge over the Clinton audio tapes in his sock drawer. This is a routine dispute between a president, a former president, and the archives. And the fact that they've tried to turn this into a criminal investigation, they have politicized this. They have they have turned this something that it's into something that's not. He did. Trump, president Trump did not have 300 classified records at Mar-a-Lago because he declassified them before he left the White House. They are, they are declassified as a matter of law, and he made a personal copy, which is his, his statutory right. Okay, so let me read something from this letter, because they say such records that they're asking for contain information that is needed for the conduct of current business of the incumbent president's office and is not otherwise available. So essentially they're saying that, hey, Biden needs this information. I don't care if you unclassify it. We need it. Who wins in that scenario? Well, it, it's going to be. It should have been resolved by a, in a civil lawsuit between the National Archives and the Office of Former President, which is how it's routinely resolved. The fact that they went to an unprecedented, unnecessary, and unlawful home raid of a former president is a red line that they have crossed. And I think the reason that the Biden administration has done this, working with the Biden White House, it's very clear from that letter that they worked with the Biden White House Counsel's Office before they ordered this home raid, is because. President Trump declassified crossfire hurricane records, uh, the Russian collusion records. It's a number, exhibit number two in the receipt that the, the government provided for the documents that they raided. And I think that the, the Biden, Obama, Hillary regimes know that those declassified personal records of President Trump are very politically damaging and they had to go get them. Hmm. So I want to read one more thing from this letter that was released today. It says they state this Supreme Court case, this decision, Nixon versus Administrator of General Services, and say that former presidents may not successfully assert executive privilege against the very executive branch in whose names the privilege is invoked. Um, again, they are saying, hey, we need this. You don't have it. I know that Trump has asked for a special master to be appointed who would actually end up saying, this is my information, this is the government's information. But at the end of the day, can all these 700 pages be Trump's? Well, it, it, as a matter of law, they can. But it's, it's also nonsensical for the National Archives to claim that President Trump has the only copy of these records for every single one of these records. That's, that's, just, that's just not possible. The, the federal government has a copy, also has copies of these records separate from President Trump's. So for them to argue that they have to get these records because they're the only copy available for all, every single one of these rec records is laughable, and I don't think that will hold up in court. Okay, so let me ask you this, because we were talking to Alan Dershowitz the other day. There's been a lot of conversation around some of the surveillance footage um, that was taken from the FBI. People are saying that Trump should release his own surveillance footage, because they're, they're saying that's how they knew that there were more documents that were being held at Mar-a-Lago. Do you think that Trump should release his own surveillance footage? Like surveillance of the storage room? I mean, I'd have no problem with that. I doubt President Trump would have a problem with that. You have to remember, step back and remember this. Every former president has a federally funded office with secure office space called SCIFs. They get 
paid federal staff. The former president and his staff get security clearances. They have uh, debugging devices. They have Secret Service protection. This is not like Hillary Clinton's server where foreign governments can hack into her home server and obtain the most highly classified records in the government. These are paper records, a copy of which President Trump kept at Mar-a-Lago that are under lock and key. He actually even put on another lock after the Department of Justice went down there and asked him to. He's been fully cooperating. And this notion that they had to go to a biased judge, this Bruce Reinhardt is a biased judge who just recused from Trump's lawsuit versus Hillary Clinton. Uh, the fact that they went to this biased judge to get this unprecedented, unnecessary, and unlawful home raid search warrant shows that they're desperate. The Biden Justice Department is desperate. Why were they so desperate to get these documents? It's a good question. Hopefully we'll find out some more information on Thursday. Mike Davis, good to see you. Thank you. All right, tonight on The Record, Greta continues her expose of Putin's atrocities.